Welcome back, Cat from Scratch episode number nine. In this video, it's gonna be pretty quick. We're going to be updating the routines that we have that export our file as an SDL to uh, handle our new data structures. Pretty quick, let's get right into it. So first things first, let's uh, update our declarations for these two functions that write STLs. So no longer taking any of those input parameters just taking the structure of the body. Awesome. That one is good to go. Actually, if I recall, in our geometry routine, we did have, in our geometry function uh, file, we had uh, this make clip routine that I had that uh, manually created these parametric polygonal meshes for clip. I believe down here we we called the um, old version of this function. Yeah, here it is. Let's just comment that out for the time being. Um, save that file. So the main body of work has to happen in this uh, out.c um, file. Let's again change all these functions to take our new input parameter, which is the body structure. Okay, so we will need this uh, num triangles value, at least for this um, second f right here as part of the binary version of the STL. So we will have to use our function from yesterday, which um, was called, I think, count faces. So that will give us that value. However, we, we won't actually be using um, this, this for loop um, incrementing to that variable because we now have a structure with everything inside it so we might as well just define uh, an iterator for the face starting at the first face on the body and uh, instead of having this for loop just have a while loop and we'll say while um, iter is not null so while we have a valid face continue and then again this normal stuff we have normals in our data structure so we don't have to bother with any of those function calls we can just say f right get our normal and if i recall this is already a vector three and each and it's a vector of three floats so float is four bytes um, you know size three into the file f so that's all can stay the same then here we're looping through the vertices in the face Oh, by the way, this this function is going to assume everything is triangulated, which, by the way, is required for STL. So I'm not going to bother with any error handling. You'll just see in the STL file it won't have a you know it won't look right unless you are working with a, a triangulated body. So just to keep that in mind, I'm not going to put any error handling here, but uh, I guess we could in the future. As you can tell, I'm kind of against error handling just as a as a matter of principle. So we'll create a, a vector of floats for the nodes. And we will uh, set them equal to iter node array j x iter node array j y then iter node array j z and then simply pass that value in here in the f right. So node. Then we'll pass actually we byte count again. If you can look back at the previous video, you'll see why we need that, and um, we'll iterate on our uh, on our faces. Then at the end here, I omitted this last time, but we really should be f closing our, our file when we're done. On to the next version of the STL is the ASCII version. Um, this time we won't actually need to get the number of triangles. I don't think because that doesn't come up front in the in the file, but we will still need that um, that iterator. So we'll say struct face iter equals body face. We'll change this first line out here for that while loop once again. While iter does not equal null. We'll kill these normal things once again. 
here we can pass in instead of normal uh, values, we can just pass in iter normal because again, iter is the face that we're currently working on and it has normal in the data structure, so no problem. Outer loop, that's fine. Here, this is going to be a lot of typing, <laughs> but uh, let's get rid of all this garbage. We're going to pass in again the x, y, and z coordinates of every vertex, so we'll say iter node array j x iter node array j y iter node array j z that should that should work uh, end loop again you have to iterate and then once again we'll f close our file now that should work. I'm just going to assume it does. I'm not going to even bother checking anything. It was simple changes. In our main file, let's update our two test cases to output using both those new files that we have. First, let's kill all our old garbage with this draw body routine. That's not from this video. So we will need, we need a car star, like a, like a string type thing. Uh, so I guess we'll call it file one equals prism.stl. And then we'll, we'll uh, use that write STL. We'll use the binary one first. We'll pass in the prism and we'll pass in the address of our file one. Let's copy that down here. This time it won't be file one, it'll be file two. It'll be called hexagon STL. We'll be passing in hexagon and file two. And it, it will be using the ASCII version. of the right STL function. That should all work just fine. Um, let's make the file. Let's uh, run it and it ran. Now you can see we have a prism.stl which is 684 bytes and a hexagon STL which is 702 bytes. It's very curious that the hexagon STL which by the way is a much simpler model is actually more bytes than our prism. Obviously that's because the prism is a binary version and the hexagon is a uh, ASCII version, that's why it's much more efficient. So I'm gonna open these two up in our uh, online visualizer and see how they work. I'll be right back. So here are the two files. I'm opening at the same time. Let's see what happens. And uh, yeah, you can see right here, we have both our prism.stl, that's, that's the big one here, as well as, you can't, you can't really see it, but uh, <laughs> it's this uh, hexagon shape one that's inside it, which is uh, to be expected. So. Yep, it works. Uh, we have uh, two new working routines that handle our new data structure. Um, and yeah, see you next time.